If you want to get a glimpse of what the influencers in real estate look like now and into the future, this episode is going to grow your thinking on how you could actually have a real estate business in which you don't necessarily do the real estate. You simply have a very strong media presence and that media presence allows you to generate leads that then you pass off to others, earning a percentage of what they do. Uh, today's guest has done that in a masterful way. Um, she's brilliant and she's got great energy and not only great energy for those that want to build big media empires, but also she's got great energy and tactics for those that just want to expand their presence and not be forgotten by the people around them, their sphere, their, ge their geographical farm, etc. You're going to love this episode. You're going to love GoGo. -Go. She's someone who you're going to want to follow. So enjoy the episode. Welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Justin Stoddart. Absolutely thrilled today to bring you a guest who is absolutely taking over, taking the real estate industry by storm. Her name is GoGo -Go Bethke. I'm going to fully introduce her here, her here in just a second because her story is going to absolutely inspire you. I want to remind you uh, that if you enjoy this show, if you get value from it, do not keep GoGo -Go and all that she shares today a secret. Please go uh, subscribe to the platform of choice, whether it be YouTube, whether it be the podcast, find her, find this content, share it with somebody who needs to hear a rags to riches story. Somebody who needs to hear an inspirational story. You're going to get that today. Um, again, let me remind you that the purpose of this show is to help you to think bigger. And I purposely bring on people like Gogo Bethke to help you do that today. So with that being said, let me uh, first and foremost, welcome Gogo. Thanks for coming on to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So that's the TV for Think Bigger. I love it. That's what that stands for. And uh, you, my dear, you, my dear, are making waves in the real estate industry. You are a big thinker, and I'm thrilled to get into your story. Uh, there's this, um, so much that I could share with people uh, about your story. I know you came here to the U.S. in 2003 with an intent on creating your, your, your story. And it, it wasn't very glamorous at first, was it? Talk to us a little bit about kind of where you started when you came in and got your real estate license. Where were you at in life? Where were you at in your head? kind of paint the picture because I think that's really going to pull a lot of people in to say like, boy, I am where you're at or I'm, I'm where you were, right? Yeah. So, oh gosh. So I always knew from the age of eight, that's my first recollection of I'm going to America, even though I didn't know what America was. I was, to be honest with you, going where Eddie Murphy was because in my mind, um, I saw a movie after communism ended in Romania and he was in it and he was so happy and he was so funny. And I just wanted to be where that man is at. I thought, I thought the place made him so happy. So that's my first recollection of coming to America, but I didn't end up coming until I was 21. So my whole family is back home. My sister, my mom and dad, my whole life really I mean I lived there for 21 years I'm 38 now um, so pretty much still longer than I lived in the US so I'm as much Hungarian as I am now American nationalized citizen um, so I got here in 2003 I came as an au pair I live in nanny and I met my husband right away uh, we got married after four months we've been married now for 17 years wow. happily and um, we got two children. So I did the whole corporate America thing. Then I did the stay at home mom thing. And then I started doing anything just to get out of the house because I realized I am not a stay at home mom material. <laughs> and uh, I was a, a, a waitress and, and, and continue all, you know, it was process of elimination of what I don't want to be when I grow up. <laughs> and uh, real estate wasn't even my idea. It was my neighbor's idea. She was a marketing director for, she is still the marketing director for capital title, local title company. And she thought I would make an awesome realtor her idea. And I was watching HGTV at the time or all day, every day being a stay-at-home mom. And I totally thought I could do that. Like it looked like an easy job on television. I'm like, I can do that. And uh, so I went, talked to Real Estate One, the brokerage. Um, I got licensed. I passed my exam right away. They even paid for my license. And so my investment coming into this industry was literally zero dollars. Um, but very quickly, I realized coming in that uh, to be a top producer, you need to spend money to make money. And I had no money. And so I had to figure out, okay, what am I able to do? When I, what can I afford to do? And what am I willing to do? And the list of things what I was willing to do got shorter and shorter. So I never cold called in my life. It's against my religion. I can do that. I'd rather take a night shift at Taco Bell on Christmas Eve before <laughs> I would cold call someone and beg them for their business. It's like, I don't know what it is. But for me, I always felt like they lucky to get to work with me. So for me to beg a stranger on the other end, I was like, oh, hell no. Like, I know what I bring to the table. I just can't do it. And, um, but I went into top producer agents' offices to kind of interview them. How do you get your leads? What's going on in your land? Like, how did you make it to be who you are? And many of them were, or they were buying Zillow leads, or they were doing cold calling, or they were spending 
thousands of dollars on farming and postcards and that, or they were door knocking. And I didn't like any of that. I mean, cold calling for me, um, I have an accent. I don't feel comfortable doing it and many other things. And I know you don't grow in comfort zone and blah, blah, blah. I know all that. I'm not willing to do it. Door knocking, I'm not willing to do it. I'm not walking up to some stranger's door. I can't do it. Zillow leads, I didn't have the money and I'm still not willing to do it because I don't like to pay third party companies if you're willing to generate your own leads because guess what they're doing? They're taking your listing that you worked so hard for, that you fed to them, and then they're gonna turn around and feed you back the leads for a good cut or upfront cost, I should say in Zillow's case. And I'm like, mm -mm, no, 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 I'm gonna figure this out on my own, thank you so much. And uh, so that's pretty much how, that the, the only thing that was left for me then was social media because I had no money. Well, that's uh, interesting when you talk through kind of all the different options, right? And some people along the way, as you were describing the different options to which you can get leads, they say, yeah, I'd be willing to do that. I'd be willing to do that. But some get to the point again, where it's like, you know, it's, it's sphere. It's people that I know, like, and trust. And it's this digital media marketing world, right? And I think for mm -hmm. some, they see digital media marketing as a true distraction from work. And I would say that there's a lot of people that use it in that kind of way. I would ask you, Gogo, what's the difference between somebody using it as a means of not doing work, right? Of not working versus the means of doing it for very productive work. Cause I think there's a fine line there, right? Oh, you can absolutely. actually go on and, and say, I've been working all day and you're simply like, like reviewing the timeline, right? And you're just looking at everyone else's stuff. What makes the difference in your mind between actually working and not working? Absolutely. So we don't post to post. And I tell that to my students also, we don't post to post just to not have an end goal. It's like, I, I made a post about that a couple of days ago, not having an end goal and knowing why we are doing this and how we are going to get there from A to Z. Then it's like running like a hamster on a hamster wheel. You're running, you're definitely running. You're running for the last freaking eight hours, but you got nowhere because you're not intentional. If you see every single post when I make it, I don't post to post. I make it, okay, what am I trying to achieve with this? Who is my audience? What am I selling to them? Even though when you're looking at my profile, I'm not selling you anything. It does not look like I'm selling you anything and I'm not. I've never asked for business. You're never gonna see, oh, if anybody's looking for a realtor in the Brighton area, here, here I am. No, I give, I give, I give, I give. I become that local expert because I give so much about the local market. I give so much about the industry. I share the industry secrets. I share other or teach other agents how to do the same. So you just automatically become that local expert. And when you become the expert, they come to you. Well, that's really interesting, right? Is it, there are so many, again, that, we're, that will, as they're looking at social media, they'll either do, be consumers, right? Meaning that they'll just take it everyone else's stuff. Mm -hmm. Or the difference that I hear what you're saying is that you actually become a creator, but not just a creator to be a creator. You're, you're an intentional creator. You actually have a plan going in. And that question that you ask is, what am I trying to accomplish, right? And, and part of what you said there was, I'm, I'm looking to bring value. How do you decide what, like what value to bring? You said some stuff about market. Like when you're looking, okay, today is like Tuesday and I'm going to post something today. What does your content calendar look like? Is it that organized or is it more like, this is what my people need to hear today? What does that yeah, look like? I, have a content calendar. I don't pre-plan. Okay. I literally wake up and whatever's on my mind, whatever's happening today, whatever life lesson I learned today, whatever pissed me off today. Uh, like yesterday, I literally was hunting down a commission. We closed on it on Thursday and I'm not going to see money until this week, Wednesday, the earliest. And that's BS. We live in the era of technology. There should be no reason why my commission is being held up just because somebody forgot to scan in two pages. It would have taken them two seconds and now here I am without a commission for two weeks because, or for a week because they mailed it. They snail mailed my check to corporate. You know what I mean? So things like that, anything that helps me or anything that's going on in my life or any life lesson that I learned, I help and share that because I want other agents to not have to experience that. I want you to learn it from my mistake or learn it from my life lesson so then you can get to your success much faster. Because we don't have to invent, invent the wheel. If somebody's already walking the walk and dancing the dance, just go watch them. Watch what they are doing and copy it and boom, you, there you, you are there. So here's the lesson that I'm extracting from you right now is that it's stuff that, like you said, pisses you off or stuff that gets you fired up excited. Yeah. I think one, one key thing that I think everybody that's listening right now needs to identify is that whatever you do in the social media space, you need to bring energy. If it doesn't bring some sort of energy, whether it makes you mad or whether it makes you glad, right? Or there's something behind it. People... People are attracted to energy. They're attracted to people who are passionate about something. Yeah. And what I hear you saying is whatever that, for that particular day, whatever gets you 
fired up, whether irritated <laughs> or excited, right? You're sharing that. Yeah, I like to use the word passionate. My husband would probably use a different word for that. He's like, oh, the Hungarian's coming out of you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love but it. I, do, I love what I get to do. Um, and I am just excited about everything. I do share the good, bad, and the ugly is, is how I say it pretty much on, on social media. And that's how my Instagram started originally because I did most of my business. And still to the day, most of my leads come on Facebook. But what happened is you get to a point in your career where you kind of need to vent a little bit. You need to like release it or you're going to freaking blow up and leave the industry altogether. Mm -hmm. And so I took my pity party over to Instagram. I figured, I don't know why I thought my clients wouldn't follow me there, but, <laughs> but I figured figured there I could vent about whatever's going on. So that, um, that uh, site, I guess, it became more so towards realtors. It became more so about the real estate career where Facebook was more so about, hey, this is the newest listing in Pinkney, Michigan. You know, look at this beautiful, you know, lake property. Oh my gosh, the market is so hot. We can get, you know, loans for 2.75% in 15 years, yada, yada, yada. So that's more so Facebook catering towards the buyers and sellers and the renters. Where on Instagram, I cater more towards the agents and what it takes to be a, a top producing agent. So. And it just kind of, when Instagram took off, it's mostly agents. 90% of my followers are agents because they can feel my pain. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Because now you've got, you've got over 200 agents. They're part of your EXP organization, right? Mm -hmm. um, you do a large amount of business yourself. But because of the amount of, you, you've got a unique structure. And I think this is interesting for people to understand because I think it's, it's indicative of, of maybe what the future of real estate could look like because you have people who are very influential, very comfortable like you that are, that are on camera, that are opening up their lives, right? To social media to say, Hey, look, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm doing. That's attracting agents to you. It's also attracting consumers to you. And now you're able to kind of marry the two, right? Because you can't handle all the leads that are coming in, right? I mean, they're coming in at like a really high level now because you're so present in sharing the lessons of what didn't work, the lessons of what is working, what you're excited about, you, you have people at attracted to this, right? And now you're able to make this, this, almost build this really powerful structure in which you've got leads coming in and you're able to give them sometimes without even a split, which is phenomenal. I'll let you kind of talk about that a little bit. You've got agents really flocking to your team because you've got this plethora of business coming at you. Like what a great spot to be in. Talk to us a little bit about um, how you maybe came up with that structure and, and any any details that I might have missed there? Yeah, so I mean, it used to be different before EXP. So I don't know how familiar your uh, your group is with, uh, or your followers is with EXP, but we have what's called revenue share and we also have stocks in the company. So we, there are certain ways that you get stocks granted. So there's four ways we get free stocks. So those are things that you do. And if and when you do them, the company will reward you for it. So those are free stocks, so free ownership, little chunks of the company that you work for. So that's stocks. And then we have what's called revenue share. So revenue share, you get a certain percentage of the agent's commission that join the company that happens to fall in your what we call organization so we have seven generations the, the people that you personally bring to the company it's called your first generation after that the people they bring to the company is your second generation then third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh so we get paid on seven generations down now an agent will never cut me a commission I don't take a cut. I don't take a split. They owe me absolutely nothing. But all my training, coaching, mentoring, including my bootcamp is, is free to them. Because my goal is I don't make money unless they make money. So I need to make sure that whatever their goals are, they're reaching them because not everybody has crazy high goals like I do, but whatever their goals are, that they are able to reach that, whatever tools they need, we are able to provide it to them because then when they are happy, they tell others, when others join, we just grow. So when they grow, I grow, it's just an overall good for everybody. So lately what we have been doing is, um, perfect example, my husband is upstairs working on this right now. He, an agent reached out to him who's out of state, who has a client who's moving in our neck of the woods. Well, that, that person who's moving here is still a good hour and 10 minutes from us. So then Dwayne reached out, my husband's name is Dwayne, he reached out to agents that we have in our organization that are in that area to see who would like to take the lead. So Bobby, he took the lead. Bobby, I brought Rob to the company. Rob bought Bobby, just so you guys know. Bobby is my second generation. So literally Dwayne just introduced the two agents to each other and said, hey, you guys deal with the referral fee. We won't take a cut. We'll just make the connection. And then what happens is now this guy will take a 25% referral fee from Bobby. We are cut out, but we were the messenger, I guess, the, the, the matchmaker, I should say. Um, and then what happens is when Bobby closes, because he is in our organization, we will make 3.8% of the total commission 
anyway, then Rab above him will make 3.5% of the commission plus Rab will make stacks. So it's helping everybody grow in the organization. Yeah, I didn't take a 25% split, but in the same time, I have two agents plus myself make really good money this month. You're treating it more as your own brokerage, it sounds like, right? That this team of 200 is like your brokerage where you don't take a split from them all, but you get paid because of the way the business is structured. Exactly. And the agent is not cutting us a check. So that three and a half percent, just so you understand how that works, our cut is 80-20 for everybody nationwide. So that 20% that they pay into the company, three and a half percent of that 20% goes to wrap, 3.8% of that 20% comes to me, and then all different percentage goes on whichever generation he falls onto the agents above. Fascinating. Um, I love how you've taken a certain model, right? And I think there's a lot of great models that, that work. You found one that really works well for what you're doing right now, right? Is that you have the amazing ability to attract clients and agents to you. And so now you're able to make, be matchmaker all day long, right? As these leads come in, you're able to find who in our organization could best serve these people. I almost liken you to like a, um, a Dave Ramsey type, right? Where Dave has this massively uh, syndicated um, following, right? Whether it be uh, his podcast, his show, his radio show, all these things. And people love what Dave teaches. So they come to Dave and say, Dave, we want um, help choosing a real estate agent. He refers them out. And now obviously his, his kind of arrangement with them financially is different, but I, but I see it's very similar is that you're, you're moving into kind of a, a lead generator role by having a large media presence. And I think it's, it's interesting for real estate agents to kind of recognize what's happening here is that you have these mass disruptors of Zillow and the like, right, that are coming in. And because they're so good at getting and keeping attention, they can, they can sell that, those eyeballs, right, those followers back to real estate agents. Yeah, and, and many of the agents look at it as like, why would I be following another realtor? Why would I be talking to another realtor? Well, for many reasons, because guess what? That realtor might have a referral for you one day. You might have a referral for them one day. Yeah. I mean, it is just amazing. Like last night, literally within 20 minutes, I, I had three transactions ready to go. I had an old coworker of mine um, from my corporate America job reaching out to me on Facebook. They are planning on moving to Utah. They have to sell two houses, him, his family's house and then his mom's house here in Michigan. And then they are moving to Utah. So I literally made a quick story post at midnight last night. And within 20 minutes, I had an agent from Salt Lake City reaching out to me. And she happens to be actually a Google's Bootcamp customer. So of course, I love the idea of helping her. And now she's going to help them find a house there. I'm going to help them sell two houses here. And if it wasn't for Instagram and Facebook, it would have never even happened. He probably so, forgot about me a long time ago. What you just shared is, is absolute magic, Gogo, because what you've said is that by simply following me on social media, you might, you might just simply come in the path of some business coming your way. Like it yeah. makes following you not just entertaining, it makes following yeah. you lucrative. Yeah, I said, whoever's watching this, if you're an agent in Salt Lake City, DM me, I have a buyer for you. Uh -huh. And now it's a probably $400,000 transaction that that agent is going to have in Salt Lake City. Um, so for those that are listening to this and super ambitious, right? And you're realizing like, okay, I can either sit below the Zillows of the world and pay them, right? Or I can rise up to their level. And I can create my own Zillow-like business in the sense, my own Dave Ramsey-like presence to where now the leads come to me, right? It's fascinating the fact that people thought of you about real estate in Utah. You live in Michigan. You're from like Hungary. Like there's, like there's, there's, uh, in fact, I said the wrong country. Tell me your. Yeah, and no, I am, you said it right. I am okay. Hungarian, but from okay. Romania, Transylvania. So it's very confusing, but I did go to college in Hungary. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm getting it. So, so again, you've got no connection to Utah. Right. But the fact that people, because you have a presence online and you, you are captivating their eyeballs, right? The fact yeah, that I'll that, show you the message. So you see how it happened. Less, it's at midnight, by the way, I talked to him at midnight. I'm like, since we are typing away and you seem to be up, is it okay if we just talk right now? And he said, yeah, I was like, I don't think I ever talked to a client at midnight before. Um, <laughs> Till now. I can't take this call right now. I just got so many messages, but ask me anything in the meantime. I dig it up and I'll <laughs> So, well, so, so here's the interesting part that, that I want to share with agents. And I, 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 I've said this before, but you've brought new depth to it, which is if you don't own a piece of real estate in someone's brain, meaning mindshare, there's 0% chance that person will ever use you for real estate. And the more real estate you own, right? It's like, Location, location, location. The reality is what we're saying here is that you need to be more intentional 
about leveraging the free tools that are out there, Instagram, Facebook, in order to grow your real estate presence in people's brains, right? That you can actually build an empire inside the minds of consumers all over the country. They think of real estate, they think of GoGo, and now she's directing business in Michigan, in Utah, and who knows how many other places, simply because you own more and more space in people's brains because you own more and more space on the internet through these social media. Kind of like being, you might not be the choice, but you at least want to be an option. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So you at least want people. So what you're doing when you're posting, you know, they might not read it. Most of the time, they probably won't read They certainly won't comment or like or whatever. But just the fact that when they're cruising with one eye open at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they saw your post. Now it's a reassurance in the back of their mind. Oh, it's a go-go check again. Oh, she's selling. Oh, she's doing something. Oh, there's her hustle. There's this, that go-go check. All I need them to do is to remember my name. <laughs> and remember what I do and by posting multiple times a day. They don't have a freaking chance to forget it because they are going to see it. You know what I mean? And that's all I need them to do. So I think I don't see it typed up. So it must've been the part where, um, where he um, told me over the phone, what he pretty much said is like, I just see you everywhere. Go, go. I see that you have a large team. Um, so this is somebody I've worked with in my corporate America job, which was over 10 years ago. Now he actually calls me Gwen because in corporate America, I was Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, hey, Juan. And I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't heard it in so long. Um, but he pretty much sat on the phone. He's like, we've been following you ever since. And I see that you have a large team now, pretty much nationwide. And I was wondering if you have a Rockstar agent on your team in Utah, you're planning on moving there, blah, blah, blah. And of course, we want to list with you here. So that's how it all started. Huh. What a fabulous, uh, really testament to the fact of, of what you can do in a very short period of time. Let's get back to some um, kind of some of the tactical, right? Is that somebody's wanting to get started. They don't yet have the the digital empire that GoGo -Go has, right? Um, what advice would you give to somebody? Let's say they're active on social media, right? I don't want to necessarily give kind of one-on-one like how to get an Instagram account, but let's, let's like people that are posting every day, what yep. additional advice would you give to them about how to up their game, how to start to create more mind share, how to start to create more followers? If, if you were to go back and tell yourself, GoGo, -Go, like, like go back in time, right? To when you were starting on these platforms, what advice would you give to yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I can tell, I don't even want to go back because if I go back, then I would have to give a totally different advice because Instagram and Facebook algorithm changes their mind every five minutes. So that wouldn't apply today. But let me tell you what I would do today if I was brand new. Um, first of all, of course, you have to have business accounts. Running business on personal doesn't work. You know why? Because if you don't take it seriously, where you have a business, when you're handling it as a business, then no one's going to take your business seriously. So first and foremost, you're going to have to have a Facebook business page and an Instagram business page. And when you create those, you link them together. You post, I always post on Instagram, automatically feeds over to Facebook. So I kill two birds with one stone. Number one. Number two, picture is very, very important. You want brand and face recognition. So by having that picture in everything, it's on my yard signs, it's on my email signature, it's in my profile, it's on, you name it, it's everywhere. So you find that one photo that you took, that is the best one you ever taken. You're going to plaster it on every, everything that you possibly can from business cards to yard signs to um, social media profile pictures. And you're going to use that until you find the next photo when it's, it's better than this one, then you're going to change it on everything. So what I'm trying to say is you can't have one photo and one profile, another photo on another profile. People are not going to be able to recognize you. Target logo looks the same on every single Target store. Starbucks logo looks the same on every single, star, every single Starbucks store. So your photo is going to look the same on everything until you're ready to change it. Same with your name. I'm not Google's real estate on one and Brighton's best realtor on the other and your favorite realtor in Michigan on the third. Like, can't do that. And I see agents do that all the time. You have to figure out what your brand is. If your name is your brand, then your name is your brand. Whatever your brand is, you're going to buy the .com. You're going to search every single social media profile and make sure you can own that name on that profile. And that's how you're going to run business. Your email is going to be the same. Like Christy is Christy at gogosrealestate.com. My husband is doing it, gogosrealestate.com. I own every single .com from any of my podcasts to any business that I do. I own the .coms for my children's names because you never know when you're going to need it. So the .com is very important. Um, then on there is your bio. Most agents don't even say they're a realtor and most of the time they don't say where. So if I meet an agent in Michigan and I'm looking at your profile, do I know that you service that area? Do I even know that you're a realtor? Because many of them have a puppy there and they're a wife to so-and-so and the mom to so-and-so and they love yoga and travel and then somewhere down there it says I'm a realtor. Really? Which one of those make you the most amount of money? Because that's what should be on top. 
So they have to hashtag realtor, they have to hashtag the uh, location that they, they cover. And so these are the four questions that your profile need to answer. Who you are, which is your name and your picture. What you do, you're a realtor. Where you do it, the area that you cover, and how can I get a hold of you? If there's not an instant button where I can dial you or send you an email, you lost the millennials. They have an attention span of three seconds, goldfish, you're gone, and they move on to the next. They're not gonna hunt you down. They're not gonna go over to a website to go to the bottom of the website to click the contact button to find your phone number to, or email address and send you an email. Not gonna happen. So how about that? A quick, a quick course. Oh, and then posting. Okay, you actually have to post. <laughs> how often do you post? How, like, what would you recommend for somebody who's like, you know, I've got go-go like ambitions and or just I want to create a great real estate team here locally where I've got business coming at me. I don't want to knock doors. I don't want to cold call people. I don't want to beg them for business. I don't want to buy business from Zillow. Mm -hmm. I just want to do what you're doing. How many posts, like what should people be aiming for? How many posts a day? Yeah, so my favorite thing to say and that don't be the secret agent. Like you don't want, people are not going to find you unless you exist. You have to exist on Google. You have to exist on Instagram and on Facebook. And, and people also like to work with people that they're alike. And only way they can figure out if you're like them is if you post and you share who you are and you share your hustle and your work ethic and what's going on in your everyday life. So I post about once or twice into my, in my feed. So that's the actual thing that you see when you're looking at someone's profile. And I post about 10 to 14 times into stories um, every single day. Now my accounts are linked together. So every I post on Instagram automatically goes over to Facebook and then I have a virtual assistant who takes my posts from Instagram and posts them for me on LinkedIn okay. so now then that about, is removed from my plate so do you do anything on your personal Facebook profile or only on your yeah but it goes from Instagram most of the time if I have a listing um, or not if when we have a listing we have all the time when we have a listing the direct link because Instagram doesn't allow you to post a direct link so those posts that are direct links from my KV core get posted directly onto Facebook so we also do that the Instagram page is connected to your Facebook business page yeah. right so, what so is everything I post on Instagram automatically goes over to Facebook to your business page though right because yeah. it feeds to yeah. your business page so do you do anything on your personal profile Oh yeah, absolutely. But my personal, I see what you mean. Sorry. My personal is personal. Okay. I don't do business on personal and I don't let people in there unless I know you. Okay. Like Great. really know you. Yeah. yeah. So under, I have like 1800 friends. Okay. If I let everybody in, I would be way over my 5,000. Now, do you boost specifically to, um, Talk to us about kind of any, any, any boosting. Is this all organic or do you go onto Facebook and say, that was a great post. I'm going to boost this and make sure everybody that's following me and maybe their friends. Yeah. Like so I never, I never boost. I never run ads either for leads. Now we do have a course and then I'll be honest with you because it does work when you do it. It works like freaking magic. Now the truth is I don't have the time. I couldn't even follow up. Like even right now, just prior to this call, I told you, um, and I'm not proud of it, but it's the truth. Um, my CRM program is turned off. All of my automated drip campaigns are turned off because we don't have the time to even follow up. So, and right now the market is so hot that I know I need help, but I don't have the time to train the person. So we're going to have to figure this out eventually. But until then, all of my automated drip campaigns are turned off because I can't even respond to the amount of leads we are getting in. KV Core works like magic. When you post something, you have 20 leads within five minutes when you have the organic growth, of course. So it's gonna take some time to have the organic filled in. But the more you share personal stuff, the more you share what it takes to be a realtor. Like let's say you go to a listing and you see something in the basement, and you're like, what the heck is this? You take a picture of that. Now people are going to tell their opinion. When you keep them entertained, they're going to come back because they get to enjoy the journey. If it's a fun journey of becoming a realtor, they get to enjoy that. And then you have support and they know what's going on. And, and then every time their mom or grandma's moving from Wisconsin, and leave the condo in Brighton, Michigan, you'll be the first one they're going to call. I love it. So no love boosting. It. I don't boost because I don't have to. I don't run ads because I don't have to. Now you do see me all the time, probably as you said, with my ads. So we do run ads for Google's Bootcamp. For your course. So that's different. That is the social media training I do for realtors and that is a product that we are selling. So for that, you are going to see ads when we have a promotion. Let's talk about how people find that. We're, we're kind of coming to an end here. I'd love to spend more time with you. But um, out of respect to you and your busy schedule, everything you have going on, talk to us about how people find your boot camp. I know that that like wasn't even a question that you would ask me is, can we promote this? I want people to know how to learn more about what you're doing. 
So this is all my asking. How do people get a hold of your bootcamp? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So if you look up gogosbootcamp.com, um, you'll see it. it is a social media training for realtors. This is my baby. This is what I love doing. It's not, I, when I got into social media, I got into it because I was broke. I had six bucks and a long list of things I wasn't willing to do. So I was almost forced to figure it out. But now I'm named the social media queen and I'm the number one agent in the state of Michigan out of all realtors that run business on social media. So it, it's pretty much everything of what I do from the systems, from literally my automated drip campaigns, my text message campaigns, my holiday campaigns, like how to build a team, how to make six digits plus passive income, how to hire a perfect assistant, the basics of social media. So we have three series on that. So it's probably not probably it is over 200 videos training. Then we also have a whole system on finesse. Finesse is the Facebook advertising course. And in that one, you'll get literally my ads. So ads that work the absolute best. All you need to do with two click of a button, click it, it uploads it into your ad campaign. You throw 10 bucks at it and you're ready to rock and roll. Powerful. So, so pretty powerful. much everything that I do, all the systems, all the apps, even my marketing contracts, every, it's everything that I do and how I build my business is a part of the bootcamp. When it goes back to the same way that you treat social media is just give value away, give, 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 right? And watch what happens. And I love nothing more than when I get messages or when they tag me of like, oh my gosh, like we did a course. So it also comes with a Facebook group and a, and a monthly live. And last month I showed them literally how I post and how the leads coming in. And I showed them on the live how I captured all of their information. And they were like, oh, like I opened my KV core, my dashboard and I showed them. I'm like, do you see yourself on my screen? Do you see your name, your phone number, anything on here? I scrolled for pages. They're like, nope, nope, nope. Everybody's good. We had hundreds of agents on there. Nope. Everybody's good. Okay, good. And I said, watch this. Okay, I made the post. I said, go to my Facebook profile, click it, follow through. Don't give me your phone number. Don't give me anything. Just log in with Facebook to see the rest of the, the, the listing. They did. And then I went back to my dashboard. I refreshed it. And all of their informations were in there within seconds. <laughs> and they were all like, boom. <laughs> and I said, and that's how you do it. We don't, we don't post to post. We post to capture. I love that. We post a capture. Let's, um, let's end with our signature question, Gogo. You are a big thinker. That's why you're here. Um, you obviously are continuing to expand your possibilities. Will you teach us how? What do you do on a regular basis to continue to be a big thinker, to continue to expand your possibilities? What does that look like for you? So for me, I'm a firm believer that if you can imagine it, you can have it. And sometimes it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine of being a millionaire if you made 20 grand this year. But then I force myself to imagine it. I literally plug music into my ear. I go sit somewhere where it's quiet. I close my eyes and I imagine myself what it would be like if I made this. What it would be like if I had that oceanfront condo. What it would be like if I... So if you can't imagine it, you can't have it. That's number one in my mind. Force yourself to be able to imagine it as soon as you can imagine it, to have it for yourself, you can have it. Number one. Number two, then I live by, there's no plan B. There's absolutely no plan B. If you give yourself a plan B, then it's like, well, you know, this is what I really want. But if that doesn't work out, I'll be happy with this. Well, then the universe doesn't really know what the heck you want. Mm -hmm. Because if you want $100,000, but you'll be happy with 50, then do you want 50 or do you want 100? Like, please decide. You know what I mean? And the universe is your internal GPS. Again, if you can imagine, if you can tell the universe, I'm at A right now and I want to be at B, then the universe is going to be like, okay, this is what you need to do. Here's how we're going to get here. But if you don't know what B is, you have options between A and a half and B, then the universe is going to be like, well, I'm not sure where you want to go. There's no plan. It'll probably choose the easiest of the two, right? The easiest to get to. This one probably. So you end up with fifth. And also the other one, I love Tony Robbins for this one. People is like, I, I just want to make money. Well, a dollar is money. You know what I mean? So you have to tell the universe what you want and also by when. So you have to put a time frame on it. So if you say, okay, I want to sell 20 transaction this year by December 31st. Now the universe says, okay, we have all this time and this is how we're going to do it. You know, whatever your goal is, you just have to know what that is. Um, and that's pretty much how I live my life. Also, I'm very, very competitive by nature. If I'm on any list, I'm on the top of it or not on it at all. Like if I'm doing something, I, you trust, you can trust your kidney on it, then I will do a million percent until it's done. Gogo, you are an inspiration to so, so many of us. I want to thank you uh, for that answer, which was absolute gold. If people didn't hear that, if you didn't hear it 10 times yet, you need to rewind and go listen to it again. Because that I advice. A quote that started this fire in me. Please. I'd love to hear it. If you don't build your dreams, somebody's going to hire you to build theirs.
That doesn't sit well with people like you and I, does it? Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, hell no. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not building somebody else's dream. I have two eyes, two hands, a mouth, a brain that I get to use. Absolutely not building somebody else's dream. I will try, I will die trying building mine. So powerful. Um, thank you for everything you've shared, for your generous contribution of time. Everybody listen to this. If you're not following Gogo on social media, if you've not yet gotten a hold of her boot camp, do yourself the favor. Um, and please don't, don't hold this to yourself. Share this with people. Create some accountability around this visualization that she's created about having these very specific goals. Um, your life will be changed by, by including having Gogo be a part of your day. I know I've gotten better by following you as well. Uh, so thank you so much for everything you've contributed. I want to remind everybody here uh, that uh, the purpose of this show is to help you to think bigger. Gogo has helped us to do that today. And my final charge and request of everybody here is to go think bigger. Thank you, Gogo. That's so fun. Thank you so much. You guys can find me on Gogo's Real Estate everywhere. I love it. All right, thank my friend, you. we'll talk soon. Thank you, Justin.